I'm in a new place, specifically Madrid, Spain, and I'd like to go find some wild clay to work with in the studio. So I want to bring you along on the journey for how I go about finding wild clay in a new place. I have some videos already published on YouTube that condense the information and just give you tips on how to do it yourself, but I thought a little longer form video showing you the real process might be useful or interesting to some of you. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look online for geological surveys. A quick Google search has revealed to me the Spanish Geological Survey. My Spanish is pretty elementary, but I should be able to navigate this website without too much trouble to find what I'm looking for. I'm going to look at the Cartografía Geológica, the geologic maps. I just want a brief overview to know if there's clay in this area that I'm going to. So I have to go out to Alcalá de Henares, and that's this town here by a river. Rivers are often a great place to look for clay because they both transport clay and they carve out the earth so that you can see different strata. I'm going to look at the legend here, and I'll just look for layers that have clay, okay? Arcilla is clay in Spanish. Lots of clay down here, and more clay down here. I want to look for some of these orange colors. Looks like a lot of clay. And lo and behold, all along south of the river is this layer three, just south of town. And that's this red clays with fine micaceous sands, green-gray micaceous sand. The chances are these dark red clays will be low fire temperature, but with lots of sand and micaceous sand at that, they'll probably be great for raku or pit firing. This looks like a really promising place to go, and I'm definitely going to check it out. Here's another map showing the same region. And you can see sort of the same stuff going on here, but this legend is different and actually has the history, the geologic history, right? So this is from this era. Another really interesting thing that you can find from these geologic institutes, full explanations, not just maps, but really sort of narrative explanations of what's under the earth and what the history is of that region. I can find the Alcalá de Henares, which has some historic photographs. I'm really interested in the, the strata that same layer that's on the map, okay, this orange striped one, which is here, and I'll find an explanation of what kind of stuff is there. clay -y sand, red clays, talking about some of the ways that it was formed, Pla red plastic clays, that's really good, arcillas plásticas o rojizas, okay, some stuff I don't know that I'll have to look up, that's fine. But again, I'm getting a general overview of what kind of stuff is in this area. There are also these cool maps showing the strata. And you can see here the river has carved out this layer, and layer one is sandy but plastic clay. So that's perfect. We can see the same, same layer here carved out by the river. So if I can get down by the river, chances are I can find some plastic clay with fine sand in it. Now, the last thing to do is to check on Google Earth. Here's Alcala, here's the river south of town. And I can just start poking around, and here's a park uh, with a parking lot, which would be a nice place to stop. And then here is what looks like clay. Clay will often weather in this way. It creates these rivulets of water that will erode in this way, and then it dries looking kind of wrinkled. So I'm confident that that's clay because I've got the geologic information to tell me that there is clay around here, as well as now some photo evidence that there's a, a mineral that looks like clay. So chances are, if I look right here, or if I can walk along the river, I'll find some good clay. So that's going to be my plan. I'll take the bus out to Alcalá de Henares and look for some clay. And I'll bring you along for that too. I could take some of this and refine it, like clean it, and it would probably be good enough. 
It's actually not bad. And it's got something shiny in it, which might be mica. I think I'll take some of this. Ah, and there's some sand underneath, a little further down. Here's something that's always useful for identifying clay. When clay dries, it shrinks. And so when you have a big flat piece of clay and it all shrinks quickly, it forms these cracks. It has these like little plates, like scales. And that is a good indication that there's clay in, in this stuff that is drying. This just looks like clay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I like the looks of this. Oh yeah. Do you hear that? That's just the clay absorbing water. Oh, this is sticky. Oh yeah. My task right now is just to get all of the clay hydrated. Because when there are, are chunks of it like this that don't absorb water, they make it feel less, less plastic than it really is. I should have done a better job of crushing this up first. Just the fact that I can do this is pretty good. And I don't, I just, I feel like it should be more plastic than this. I'm really surprised that it's breaking so easily. But maybe I'm just wrong. I'm gonna take some, cause I just, it just feels like it should be a good clay and I'll test it out in the studio and see if maybe I'm just wrong about it. I would like to get to the bottom of, of this. Do I just need to process it and let it get really wet and then it'll be better? Or am I just wrong about this somehow? Which is very possible because I'm not an expert. When clay is mostly dry, but not all the way dry, basically what we call, would call leather hard it like it's shiny right like when you press metal on it it burnishes it and it's I mean look at that it's shiny this is like pure clay I could just take that and just walk home why don't you Cause it'll be heavy yeah it feels very light which I don't know why but it seems wrong my like muscle memory says that dry clay is heavier than this well let's just keep poking around here and see what else is going on because there will be different stuff in different spots mm -hmm. all right I mean, it's all clay. What's going on here? I mean, it's just playing in the mud, you know? What's better than that? Nothing. Nothing. Exactly. It's 
so some cracking. I mean, pretty good, all things considered. And I like that it's shiny. I don't know what this is going to be, and we'll find out together. Anytime I am looking for clay and I find something that's a uniform color that's different than other stuff around it, I like to test it to see if it's a different clay that's more pure or better in some way. Sometimes it's a different mineral, you know? Feels kind of funny. Feels sandy, maybe? Like it's got a lot of small non-clay particles in it. It's shiny, and you can also see like black speckles. Mm -hmm. I think I even see red speckles. So it's got a lot of stuff in it that's not clay, but it's actually quite pretty. Nice color. Yeah. I could add this to a white commercial clay and make a boring white commercial clay interesting because the commercial clay will be very plastic. This isn't very plastic, but it might be pretty. So it'll be worth firing this to see what it looks like fired mix it in different proportions with a commercial clay and see if it's interesting. It smells like sand. Can I smell it? Yeah. Sandy. This is the other thing that happens when you're out collecting clay. You're like, maybe I want some of this rock. And the sand. You want everything. And a little bit, you know. <laughs> so this is a test, right? You press it and see how badly it cracks. So right now you're just testing it? Yeah. Before collecting some of it? Yeah. All we're testing for now is plasticity, mm -hmm. whether it's pliable enough to work with. Mm -hmm. And the best test for that is this. You roll a coil and then you bend it. And if it breaks, it's it's not very plastic. A little sandy bit. We'll take that out. We'll do that. I hope this whole sample turns out to be as good as that little one that I just had. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> 